Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. This episode is going to be geared towards those of you who either make or are thinking about making your own guitar pickups. And what I'm going to be talking about specifically is my new coil winding machine. This is actually the fourth coil winding machine I've had in the past dozen years or so that I've been making guitar pickups. And this one in particular represents kind of what I've learned over the years about winding pickups. And it features some ideas that I've had uh, with regard to making pickups that I wanted to incorporate into a new pickup winding machine. Now in this episode, I'm going to talk about the features of this winding machine, you know, its basic design and such. And then I'm going to show you how I assembled the machine. And don't worry, it doesn't take very long. I'm going to speed up the video so it goes by really quick. I'll demonstrate how it works. And then in the end, if, uh, if you'd like to show my YouTube channel some support, I'm going to tell you how you can purchase a fully illustrated assembly manual for building your own pickup winding machine. So let me bring you in a little closer and I'll uh, kind of walk you through some of the features of this winder. When I designed this winder, I divided it up into three sections. I have the wire tensioning section, the motorized auto traversing section, and then the coil winding section. And I'm going to start out by explaining the basics of the wire tensioning section. And what I have here on the front is this is a, a nylon wire clip and this is where the wire, as it comes off the spool, it's fed up through this little uh, wire clip. And from there, it goes into the wiring tension, wire tensioning mechanism. And this is pretty simple. It, is, it consists of a screw which was installed through the bottom and then glued with some uh, CA glue. Then I install a couple of felt washers and these are actually drum cymbal washers and I've been using these for years. Uh, they're typically used to sandwich a cymbal when it's installed on a cymbal stand. But what I'll do is I'll run the wire between the two felt pads and I have a washer and then a wing nut and as I tighten this wing nut that obviously presses the two felt pads together and that's what it, uh, generates the tension and the tension exists from here up to the bobbin. So this is a pretty simple way to control tension and it, it's the sort of thing that takes a little bit of experience uh, to know when you've got enough tension or, or when you have too much tension and uh, you have to have some tension on the wire otherwise the coil you're going to wind could be loose and a loose coil can result in microphonic feedback. Too much tension, however, can cause the wire to break as you're winding it. So it takes a little bit of uh, experience and some feel for how much tension w is going to work and, and when it's too much. And I've actually thought about using a force sensor, which I could install underneath the uh, felt pads. And as I tighten that force, uh, sensor would be connected to a digital readout like the counter I have here and as I tighten the wing nut it would increase that force and I could I have a number probably in grams that I could associate with the tension but that just seems to be a lot more work than it's really worth so uh, this this approach works quite well so once the wire comes out of the tensioner it heads up here to the motorized auto traversing section and this is based on a 12 volt DC gear motor that can spin at a maximum of 10 RPM which is really as fast as you want to traverse and as the motor shaft is turning it's turning this Delrin plastic cam and the cam in turn pushes on a spring-loaded steel rod that's supported by a pair of Delrin plastic supports and then in the center, uh, between the two supports, I have a nylon spacer. And in the middle of that nylon spacer is a shallow groove that's cut all the way around the circumference. And that's where the wire will ride in as it's being guided onto the bobbin. And then on 
both sides of the nylon spacer, I have these collars, which are uh, held in place with set screws. And I can loosen those set screws and move this assembly side to side in order to line it up with the bobbin. The motor itself is then wired into a pulse width modulation circuit board. And that circuit board allows me to, I have a switch here connected to it, which I can switch on or off and I can, I can actually change the direction of the motor uh, to spin either clockwise or counterclockwise. However, for the uh, traversing mechanism, it doesn't matter uh, either way. So I typically will just set it and just leave it. And then I can control the speed with this knob here. It's, it's connected to a potentiometer and I can go from zero up to the 10 RPM uh, that the motor can spin. And the beauty of this is that by controlling the speed of the traverse, I can actually mimic a scatter wound pattern when I'm winding my bobbins. And as you know, guitarists love scatter wound pickups. And I'm not going to get into the specifics of why it would take too long to do that in this video. I, I may talk about that in a future video. But just know that guitarists really like the scatter wound pickups. And typically in the past, the way you would scatter wind a pickup is you would control the traverse manually by hand by clasping the wire with your thumb and forefinger and guiding it between uh, two collars. And that would allow you to distribute the wire across the width of the bobbin as it's spinning. I can raise or lower the traverse speed by very specific amounts at very specific turn counts. And I can vary that and create a multitude of different scatter winding patterns. And the reason that's important is because different scatter winding patterns yield different kinds of tone in the finished guitar pickup. So I'll leave you with that, let you kind of mull that over and what that means uh, with a design like this. Now the third and final section is the coil winding section. And again, it is based on a 12 volt DC motor similar to this one. The difference is it can spin to a maximum of about 1200 RPM. And I chose 1200 RPM because I have found in my experience that's about as fast as I'm willing to spin the bobbin based on the amount of tension that I typically will put on the, the coil wire. Um, if I were to spin it faster, which I could by using a faster motor, I would uh, run the risk of that wire breaking more frequently. So 1200 seems to be a good speed. And like the um, auto traversing motor, this gear motor is wired into a pulse width modulation circuit board that has a potentiometer and then a um, on off and reversible switch. Now in this case, I do use the reversible switch. So I can spin it clockwise or counterclockwise depending on the type of pickup I'm making. And then I can raise or lower the speed. But you know, I typically run it at full speed at about 1200 RPM and that seems to work fine. Now, an important requirement of a coil winding uh, section is that you have the ability to count the number of turns and I'm doing that with a digital counter. This is a, an LCD counter and it is connected to a magnetic proximity sensor which is installed just below the motor to the back and the way it works is I have a neodymium magnet in the back of the winder um, plate uh, the bobbin mounting plate here and each time it turns and passes in front of that proximity sensor it will advance the count um, or it, it advances the uh, digit, digital counter by one count so that's kind of how that works and this particular counter I chose it because it can sense up to 1200 counts per minute. That's why I'm using, or another reason why I'm using the 1200 RPM motor. Uh, if I were to spin faster, this counter couldn't keep up with it. And it's pretty hard to find affordable counters that can count faster than that. But you have to look for 
the pulses per second and this one is 20 pulses per second so that means 60 seconds in a minute times 20 is 1200 so that works really well for this motor now i know i said this winder was broken down into three different sections but there is one aspect that i need to explain and that is the power supply in this case, I'm just using a simple 12-volt uh, power supply, which plugs in um, to a hub that has wire connections that supply power to the circuit boards and both the motors. Uh, the counter itself is actually battery powered. So uh, that's how uh, the, uh, the whole thing is powered. It's, it's really simple and easy to use. And there's a lot of wires sticking out the back here, and that's only because I, I've taken the back off uh, as I'm doing more testing. I wanted access in case I needed to change up some wiring. So, um, but that's how the, the, the machine is powered.
Okay, well, there you have it. That is the basics of my pickup winding machine. And if you found this to be uh, informative or inspirational, maybe you'd like to try building something similar yourself, you can go to my eGuitar Plans webpage, and if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a section where I sell uh, assembly manuals and plans for a variety of different tools that are popular with luthiers, and I have included a, an assembly manual for this pickup winder. So uh, think of it as a way of showing uh, the Highline Guitars YouTube channel some support and then getting something in return. So I encourage you to hop over there, check it out, uh, pick up a set of uh, the instruction manual for this, maybe you know a set of plans for one of the guitars that I've designed or the CNC machine, the buffing machine, the uh, flip top tool stand, and my drum sander, you know, they're all there. So uh, check it out. And I hope that uh, you'll give this video a thumbs up. If you don't already subscribe, click that subscribe button. Click the bell for notifications when I post new videos about once a week. And whew, uh, I hope you have a great weekend and a great week ahead. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.